Coming up on the Hawks Nest, we're going to talk softball, baseball, tennis, and gymnastics. And then we're going to take a look at the NCAA tournament and give you our predictions for how we think it's going to go this March Madness. Hello. Thank you for coming and watching the Hawks Nest. I'm your host, Tom. I'm Rebecca Ganchamella. And today, we're going to be talking about all things SEMO athletics, and then we're going to dive in, take a look at the NCAA tournament, tell you how we think it's going to go. Well, let's start with SEMO softball because they've been red hot recently. They're on a 10-game win streak. This is the longest one under head coach Mark Redburn. They actually made the NCAA softball social media pages for one of their standout plays Sunday against Omaha. It was a triple play. You need to go back and watch that. It's on Twitter. It's super cool and they won against Missouri State in their home opener March 14th with a score of 5-2. to two. And we haven't lost since we played them previously so we avenged that loss. We started that game off strong with uh, Anderson's RBI triple, a sacrifice by Fly by Ashley Ellis and a home run by Addison Barnowski all in the first inning. We uh, never lost hold of the game throughout the seven innings. Very great game there. Junior Alexis Estes took the win for that game pitching four innings allowing two runs on five hits with two strikeouts and two walks. Well, and then sophomore Rachel Rook, she got the save. She pitched for the final two outs of that game, and one of those was a strikeout. But let's take a look a little bit closer at Rachel Anderson because she was unanimously voted the OVC Player of the Week. And why was she voted Player of the Week, Tom? Well, she had a great week. She leads the league in batting average, slugging percentage, on-base percentage, hits, triples, total bases. It's a lot of things to be leading the league in. Well, and then she's second in the nation in triples. Third in hits, third in triples per game, 16th in batting average, and 19th in slugging percentage. That's just a lot of accolades to have, and she's still a junior. There is a lot that she still has to accomplish here at SEMO. Yes, yes. Uh, she broke the school's all-time career triple record against Missouri State at home with 19. And she's still going. A lot she's of triples. Going. It's a lot of triples. So they start conference play tomorrow with a doubleheader against Tennessee State. They've actually had a little bit of time to rest up. They had their last game Sunday, and they were supposed to play Wednesday against SIU, but that game was canceled due to impending weather. So I think they're going to have a great start to conference play. I think we can all agree that softball started this season off very well. It's going to be important that they take over conference play because you can play really well outside the conference, but until you get those wins in the grindstone of conference play, it doesn't really matter. Yes, though the conference games are extremely important, and it's also extremely important for baseball. They started conference play over the spring break, but they went 2-6 and six over in those games. They lost to UT Martin and SIUE those series. They lost those 2-1, to one, and they also lost to non-conference rival SIU on the road. So they had a great start to the season, but they kind of ta tampered off just a little bit. They're kind of looking to get things rolling again. That brought their record, the two and six spring break, basically brought us down a little bit. Brought us to twelve and nine overall, two and four in the OVC, which puts them at seventh place currently. So we're going to need to make strides there to be able to finish higher in the OVC. Exactly, and they f face number three, Austin P. Starting tonight, it's a three-game weekend series, so they're kind of looking to turn some things around against a tougher team in the conference. Exactly, coming off that tough, uh, tough home, tough uh, spring break, it's going to be important that we get a nice home stand. Hopefully, looking for three wins this weekend. And then if we go into tennis, they went 2-1 and one over spring break. Not bad. They lost to Louisiana Monroe, and then they beat Jackson State in Jackson, Mississippi. And that's not to be confused with our OVC rival, Jacksonville State. But then they shut out Loyola New Orleans on the road 7-0. to zero. Very, very impressive. Very, very team. impressive stuff. 7-0, so to put that in perspective for people at home, they only play seven matches. That's why it's 7-0. Four of those are singles, three of those are doubles. So to win all seven of those is an incredibly rare thing to happen in the sport of college tennis. It's a, definitely a huge thing to congratulate them on. And they start conference play next Friday against UT Martin. And I think they're going to do great. I think they're, do, they're on the right track right now. Definitely coming off a 7-0 win. I mean, they've set the bar. That we should, why, are we, why we shouldn't even be losing any points at all. Exactly. Uh -huh. I agree with you. So if we go to gymnastics, they hosted Lindenwood and Mizzou at the Show Me Center on the 10th. It was their first time hosting a meet at the Show Me Center in quite a long time. They took third place out of those three teams. They had a score of 189.800. Mizzou is second with 195.200. Lindenwood won with a 195.900. So gymnastics has kind of been struggling a lot this season, but Coach Ashley Lawson has really been turning this team around mentally. So now it's just kind of getting things to work on the floor. You mentioned that they came back to the Show Me Center. That was the first time SEMO Gymnastics has been hosted a match in the Show Me Center, which is in five years. So that's a big deal. 
Uh, attendance is up this year. We're breaking records attendance at Hauk, which is why they're having to play matches now at the Show Me Center. So great things going on at SEMO Gymnastics for sure. I agree. You know, that program's really been turning around. They actually saw Lindenwood again this past Saturday at the Arkansas Quad Meet where they were playing uh, Arkansas and Texas women. And they lost that meet. They were in fourth. And they were 3.925 points behind third place Texas women. And so that's actually not as bad as some of those other meets have been. I mean, until they get the ball rolling, they, the ball's not rolling. So, I mean, it's just going to be on gymnastics to figure that one out. And they're actually going to be back in my hometown this weekend of Shreveport, Louisiana, for the Midwest Independent Conference Championship. So, best of luck to them. And for those of you confused of that, that not being the OBC, SEMO is the only OBC school with, no, with women's gymnastics. So they compete in the MIC, not the OBC. Yeah, and they'll compete against conference rivals Lindenwood, which is why they face them so much this season, Illinois, Chicago, Texas women, Illinois State, and Cincinnati. But now, uh, I mean, time for the beef, uh, the NCAA tournament. Yep. How's so, it going to go? So I was very happy to see that two OVC teams made it into the tournament, even though one of those wasn't SEMO. It's been the first time since 1987 that the OVC got an at-large bid. Uh, so I have Murray beating Marquette in the first round, uh, and then they're going to lose to Florida State in round two. And then for Belmont, I had them beating Temple, which they did. And then so they're going to beat Maryland, then beat Yale in round two. And ultimately, they're going to lose to my final four pick, Michigan State. And then I have Gonzaga taking the trophy at the end. However, I've made two other brackets. I've got Murray State winning it all on my coin flip bracket where you just flip a coin and, you know, just base it off heads and tails. Murray State's going to take that trophy. And then I have a mascot bracket based on how cool the mascots are. And I have Syracuse taking that crown because it's an orange. I mean, yeah, many, many Americans, I mean, they forget that logic needs to be thrown out the window and it needs to be more about mascots and coin flips this time. You know, I mean, you're right. You, you those brackets are them. probably going to do better than my real one, so. <laughs> But uh, the way I see it, I agree with you. I think Gonzaga is a national champion. I like 12 seeds beating five seeds in this tournament, and I also like defensive teams that can rebound the ball with experience. For that reason, I, I pick Gonzaga. Uh, not big on Duke. Zion isn't human, but it's still a team sport. I'm going to put money on Gonzaga. Um, as far as OVC goes, John Morant's going to be a lottery pick this year for Murray State. They're going to win their first game over Marquette. Belmont, they're an 11 seed. 11 seeds win a lot of game in this tournament. They shoot the ball well, and they play – great defense. I like them to get to the Elite Eight. Well, best of luck to all of us and to those of you at home that are doing the Bracket Challenge, and we thank you for watching the Hawks Nest. Be sure to follow SoutheastArrow.com, our website, and the Southeast Arrow on all of our social media pages.